It is an honor and it is a pleasure to introduce our next speaker, a very special speaker. A little bit about him. Dr. Hilo Newman is Israel's Council General to Los Angeles, where he serves as the Senior Representative for the States of Israel to the Pacific Southwest. He is a highly respected author, academic, and statesman. Among, among his many diplomatic experiences, he served as a policy advisor to three foreign ministries, ambassador to two Muslim states, and deputy council general in Boston. Council General Newman made alliance to Israel with his family as a young man from South Africa. He served as a medic in the IDF and is married to a daughter. Together they have a 10-year-old son, Ron. Please help me give a warm round of applause. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, it is uh, truly a pleasure and privilege for me to be here with you. Uh, Chamber of Commerce is really an important uh, body and um, we'll be glad to work together in the future in many aspects. Uh, just to introduce myself briefly, uh, as we said, I'm Helen Newman. I arrived only three months ago to Los Angeles. And uh, a lot of people think that what, what is the work of a consulate, of a, a consulate of a country? So, of course, uh, there's a lot of political networking and there's a lot of um, um, different types of fields of work which are connected to influencing public opinion and things like that. But a large part of our work is economic. Uh, we look at California and the region in economic eyes. Uh, we see the importance as the largest economy. I mean, California is greater than many countries in the world. So a large part of our task is actually economic. Uh, we are often we our consulate is here in the, uh, in Los Angeles, and we are open for any kind of anyone who has any interest in any field of business. Uh, you're invited to make contact with our consulate. Uh, we are going to appoint a new um, officer who will be responsible for economic issues and matters. We also have a consulate in San Francisco, which has a full economic mission. Uh, but we are op opening a, an office who will be responsible for delegations, for visits, for interests, any kind of contact you want to make uh, in the business field with Israel. Uh, just this week we had two requests, uh, the economic five, and we can answer them. And the people are going to Israel to have meetings, we set up the meetings for them in Israel. So that's part of our task. And I'd just like to mention also. In uh, the ranking of doing business, you know, the World Bank has a ranking of countries according to what they call doing business. And Israel was jumped to the 35th position out of 190 countries. So we're talking, uh, we've been uh, with a rise of 14 places. Uh, we're reaching the top slowly. Uh, and that and doing business is a ranking which takes into consideration different aspects. Like, for instance, regularization, procedures, taxation, all these things, and then it gives a ranking. So, 35 out of 190 means that our regulatory process, um, our taxation is one of the best. Actually, in taxation, we're at 13 out of 190. So, that means that our taxation process is, is one of the best in the world. Okay, I actually prepared a, a, power, a very brief PowerPoint presentation which I thought I would be able to show you, but it, it's, uh, somehow it doesn't connect here. So I'll just uh, give you highlights from the PowerPoint presentation that have nice pictures. So we'll have to do it some other time. <laughs> we'll have to, I'll have to do it again with the pictures. But I'll just give you a few uh, highlights which are might be of interest for you uh, in your business world and in contemplating uh, things in the future. Uh, let me just mention that, you know, the world is changing. The global market is changing completely. For instance, if we look at the top 10 countries in 2006, top economic countries, uh, companies, sorry, in 2006, among them you will find ExxonMobil, Gazprom, 
uh, Royal Dutch Shell. What do you hear here? You hear energy. You hear natural resources of energy. If we jump quickly to 2019, Audio. What are the top ten country, uh, top ten companies that lead the economy of the world? And I'll read the list: Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Alibaba. No energy. What energy company? The world has changed. The energy companies, the natural resources, are moving out for production, for technology, for human innovation. That's the direction of the world. And this touches every single field of applied science. Uh, I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know if you wanted to. I don't know the fields of business that you work in, but I can promise you that every field of business is touched by this change and the move to modern technology and innovation. Um, I'm glad to say that Israel has been a powerhouse in this move towards innovation and modern technology. There are a lot of, you know, we call the startup nation. There are a lot of questions of why, why is Israel such a small country? I mean, I mean, we like the size of New Jersey, the whole country of Israel. So, why has Israel become such a powerhouse in innovation? The reason, I would say the two or three reasons, but the main reason is, first of all, we never had natural resources. We were surrounded by Arab states which had gas and oil. We did not have that. So we had to base our economy on production, on uh, human innovation. Second thing is that we were threatened from the beginning from the establishment of the state, so we had to innovate in order to be on the cutting edge of technology, military-wise and otherwise, which sprang many fields of innovation, different fields of, of interest. Um, uh, just about every major company has R&D centers in Israel. If I just Google, Yahoo, IBM, Samsung, Philips, Siemens, uh, all the media companies, they all have R&D centers in Israel, Intel, uh, all these companies. Uh, the result of this, what I call, startup nation of Israel has led to a fact, to a, a situation that if you look at the ranking of world leaders in innovation, Israel is third in the world. First is Switzerland, second is USA, and the third is Israel. So that's just a, a feeling of, um, of where the world is going and uh, the importance of innovation. Um, it's also what's called the ranking of confidence, confidence survey, which is done by Deloitte. And uh, there again, Israel relate, um, rates among the first three countries of the world in confidence in doing business. So, uh, you have a lot of good companies if you feel that you want to go in that direction. Now, let me give you a few, a few examples of how innovation can change life. Um, technology or even water, uh, all different kinds of applied ways of using the innovation. I'm sure it can touch every single one of you in your field. If you want, we can do the questions and answers, we can, we can go into this a little bit. But I'm just going to give you a few examples, I'm only speaking 10 15 minutes, so I just want to give you a few examples of how modern technology changes the world and can impact even small and medium businesses. For instance, water. Water, of course, is a big issue. It's also a big issue in California. Um, so there are big forms of desalination and things like that, which cost a lot of money. That okay, we understand that. But modern technology has brought about precise agriculture, precision, what we call precision agriculture. So, for instance, Israel developed what's called drip irrigation, which saves a lot of money, a lot of water for that money, in irrigation. But now the systems are more developed, and you can do everything through drip irrigation. I mean, fertilizers, pesticides, everything through these small uh, tubes which are placed on in, in the garden. So it saves also water, but also saves money. A new development, for instance, is the fact that you can make water out of thin air. That's a new company, uh, an Israeli company, it's called WaterGen, which goes to Africa. They set up this machine. And, uh, desolate places in Africa which don't have anything, and they create water from the air. It takes the air and um, decentralizes the water, 
breaks it up into its components, sorry, breaks up the air into its components and creates water. So even in the desert, you can just take the air with this machine and make water. So these are new directions which you see that how modern technology can impact things. Um, let's give another example. You know, Israel was always a failure in the automobile industry. A real failure. <laughs> We created one car, which was called the Susita, about 30, 40 years ago, and it was a, a big failure because our expertise is not in the, the hardware of automobiles. I mean, you've got so many American companies. Today, 2019, there are hundreds of Israeli companies leading the automobile industry. Now, how do you understand that? Because the companies are all dealing with the, the uh, brain of the car, with the senses of we're not dealing with the hardware of the car, we're dealing with the software, dealing with the computers of the car. Um, we have a large company worldwide, which I'm sure you've heard of, which is leading the way in automated vehicles, sensors, because you know for automated vehicles to travel on the road, you need all these sensors. It was all developed from the military, from uh, air vehicles, uh, drones and things which needed sensors in order to guide their, their way. Today it's all implemented in the automobile industry. Now you can have automated cars traveling, which senses drive the car. So this is another example of how things can uh, change dramatically just by the right implementation of, uh, of things. Um, for instance, a Waze. Waze is an Israeli company, I'm sure you all know the navigation system, which began this whole process of navigation. Today you don't need maps anymore. You know, when I was a little kid, I went to a company which did what they called uh, electrophones. Is to film things and put them on paper, and you could have like 30, 50, 60, sometimes 100 pictures on this model and saving storage. So when I was a little kid, I went to the factory and I said, Wow, well, perhaps you should put a bag sign. We'll save everybody from holding a map in their car. They just have this thing and they put it in the, in the machine and they see the map. So the head of the factory said to me, Huh, that's no longer relevant because in the future of the navigation system. So they would need the map. I mean, you've got ways, you've got... So all these navigation systems are the future. And Israel is a leading aspect in that. Also the storage, the storage on Sunday, is on what we call Discord Key. Uh, this is all led by Israeli technology. But this is the future. Many I don't know whether any of you in the medical field, uh, medical technology, medical equipment. For instance, there are new devices now that you swallow a pill, for instance. Called pill cap, you want to play as well. You swallow a pill and it shows the internal uh, build of the body. So you don't need um, procedures that go into the body in order to, uh, which are of course damaging and, and hurt and, and aesthetics. All kinds of new technology which is um, building up the, the field. There's an Israeli company that developed what's called Rewalk, which is for people who are disabled, they cannot walk. It's a machine, I had a nice picture to show you, but we don't have the PowerPoint. But a, a person can get up and walk, although he's completely disabled. It allows him, the machine is like, a, you know, it's not the Terminator, but, uh, <laughs> but it's getting close. Um, last, I'll give another two or three examples, and that's it. Um, I've served as ambassador in Uzbekistan. And Uzbekistan, of course, is not the United States, it's, uh, I would say, in its production and in its um, facilities, it's a few years back. It needs to, to, to move on. The first thing that I noticed, and I also got appeals in this from men, from citizens of Uzbekistan, is that their cows um, give about six, seven liters of milk. Israeli cows give between 14 to 18 liters. So they're more than done. So we brought experts. Uh, to give advice to cow, uh, grow, the people growing um, cows and, and wheat for milk and matter, on how to improve the situation. What I learned was not just a learning process for me, but what I, what I learned was that every component of the environment makes a difference. For instance, if you have in what temperature they eat, what food they eat, uh, what type of conditions they live in, the cows. And how they, what, the, what conditions they, what food you give, how often you feed them, what type of water you give them. All 
all these conditions produce, give in the end the final result of production work. So, what Israel is doing is also breaking down the issues into the different components and then measuring each one, like for instance, growing of fruits and vegetables. So there we have a genetic process, engineering process, where we feed the seeds, choose the seeds, plant them, give them the ideal circumstances and environment, and then they produce the rest of the best products. So um, I would say that that's more or less in a nutshell, I'm just trying to give examples how the new modern technology can touch everyone in their, in their lives, uh, in their businesses, and uh, we'll be glad to work together in any way we can uh, to promote your businesses, cultivate ties with your counterparts in Israel, <coughs> uh, and sometimes we also have economic delegation coming here. For uh, instance, there's a translation services that are coming to, 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 uh, to Los Angeles. They're making contact in translation, those who need, for instance, translation services to Europe or uh, Arab countries, or whatever you need Arabic, you need French, you need German. Uh, so this is just one example of all types of different uh, companies that we can connect to. Thank you, Roger, for the question. Thank you very much. Yes, question. Thank you. Dr. Newman, thank you for your speech and thank you for being here. Um, I'm an um, ambassador for ACRA. ACRA is the, autonomy, uh, the I'm sorry, American Car Rental Association. And right now we're working on uh, legislation for autonomous vehicles. Uh, there's not much of that and we're, we're paving the way, so to speak. I'm wondering if a similar uh, legislative progress is happening in Israel and how far the autonomous vehicles are doing in Israel. Thank you. Uh, interesting question. Uh, I'm not an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> but what I can say is that yes, it is being uh, accountable. It will have to go through legislation in Israel as well. Uh, the, those that are leading the industry, uh, leading the industry are trying to lead also the legislation in this matter. I'm not an expert on the exact wording. For one, I can try and find for you uh, what the type of wording they're using or what is still being developed. Uh, the evaluation is that um, what well, Israel is uh, leading in the technologies that will be part of an automated car, but it won't come out in Israel first. It will come out the first markets that, that are most interesting, of course, the United States and Europe, Asia. Uh, so even the Israeli technology is trying to be used by different car companies and car industries. They will first come out in Europe and the United States. So Israel is not so rushed to uh, do the legislation. They're thinking about it. In the end, if you ask me, I think they'll just follow the European model. In other words, the Europeans in the end will, will legislate this issue, and Israel will just follow the standards of the European model. So I would follow the Europeans more than anything else because they have very strict, uh, you know, all the issues of pollution and all the issues of uh, regularization. I would follow the European as a very strict standard. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador, for joining us today. Uh, originally, anti BDS was a conversation, and the general in the United States, our chamber passed a resolution to support anti BDS movement. I want to know when this, we're hearing the BDS again here and there, how we can support anti-BDS campaign again and working with you guys to Thank you very much. I'd like to express my deep appreciation for your stand on this. It's, a, it's a, an ideological stand, it's a just stand. Um, let me tell you something about these things. Things that uh, not always is known. In the source, in the root of BDS is anti-Semitism. So when, uh, when a company says, uh, a body says, we believe in BDS because we care about this or that and the other, the next question I would ask them is, okay, how many countries are on your list of BDS? Who else is on your list? What number is Israel on your list? I mean, you've got countries like uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Algeria, Libya, which are in total chaos, Syria, where hundreds of thousands of people have been killed by the, by the regime. Where are they on the list? And when a movement 
says, well, only Israel will do this. Then it reminds us of the singling out of ethnic groups. And the biggest in its source and its origin came from anti-Semitic sources. And the singling out is clear. It's discriminatory uh, for clear reasons. Um, anyone can have a criticism of Israel and its policies. I would expect anyone who wants to come and be part of the debate and, and talk about the issues of why there's no peace for the Arab world, why there's no peace for the Palestinians. I'm prepared to handle this debate any day, any time. We've got, uh, we've got very good, uh, and, uh, we've got understandings of the situation. We can explain what, what, how the situation is going. But BDS and organizations like BDS have no interest in dialogue, they have no interest in peace, their interest is just uh, discrimination. Uh, so I can only applaud you for your stand. Um, BDS has had no real success in any kind of way. Their only success is in image. Uh, because they try to make a lot of noise and they try to cause a negative image about it. Uh, but in, in reality, we know there's not been one real uh, decision or resolution that has had an impact. Speak of it, and as I said, the Arab French soldier is to root out progressive uh, teaching at the college level, and as I said, at the college level, high school level. What, what do you think is contributing to, to the rise in this, this teaching? Is it, it's this thing, so we see eight, she's eight hours a day to get. Inundated with video, and she has to report back to the to a group that tries to put a stop to it. What, what, do you, what do you attribute the increase in anti-Semitism yeah. te of teaching? Yeah, unfortunately, you know we're eight years since the Holocaust, and we still have anti-Semitism. Well, not only we still have, but also it, it's even on the rise. Uh, in your uh, 2015, more than 50% of attacks against innocent civilians were against Jews, although the Jews are only 2% of the population. So there's something here which goes back in time uh, with this issue what we call anti semitism So, you know, there have been three stages in anti semitism Started off with what was called Yudin Hass, which means the hatred of Jews. So, there's a more religious aspect which is based on old. Uh, dogma of uh, other religions like Christianity and Islam, uh, which um, caused about um, an, an anti-Jewish uh, attitude. By, by, the, by now, of course, we know that the Pope and the Catholic Church has changed the view completely on, on Judaism. Today, so see Judaism as a, as a cousin or brother, as, as the origin of Christianity. In the past, they used to see it as the Catholic Church and the Pope. Then we have excellent relations between Judaism and Christianity at the highest levels. But there's that sentiment we made. The next stage in, in, in what we call the hatred of the Jews was a more racial uh, hatred. It's called anti Semitism or the Nazi period, which introduced a racist uh, discriminatory uh, dog. And that, of course, led to the extermination of uh, 6 million Jews. In Today we're seeing a new development which is, okay, it's not trendy anymore to say I hate Jews because it's, it's frowned upon in society. So they say we hate, uh, we, we're anti zionist or anti israel So that's like the trend of the new anti semitism what it's called anti israel So the arena developed. Why it still remains, why do we have an attack on the synagogue? Uh, just a year ago we had an attack on Pittsburgh and the power on the synagogue in San Diego. Why does a, a young guy in the United States take a ride to walk into the synagogue and start shooting? I mean, the synagogue is not going to do this group. So it's a based on a lot of stuff that goes in social media uh, from extremist groups. Uh, groups. And you've got extremist groups on the right, you've got extremist groups on the way, on the left. It comes from the left, the right, and the left together. So um, we have to deal with this. And the only way to really deal with it is to work internationally against such extremists. Uh, I'll just add one more sentence about this, is that the world today is not divided between one religion and another, or one ethnic group and another. The world today is divided
between moderates and extremes. And for instance, if you take the Muslim world, you have extreme Shiite organizations and extreme Sunni organizations which attack Muslims. The majority of the uh, victims of extreme Muslim Islam are Muslims. Because they first attack the moderate Muslims. And I serve, I said, I serve in Uzbekistan, which is a moderate Muslim country. And their biggest threat is from Shiite and Sunni extremists they want to uh, annihilate the planet because they're secular. So the biggest battle today between extremists and moderates, and uh, you have extremists in all camps. And you have extremists also amongst those who, who just hate Jews because they're Jews. How do we get in touch with you? With me? Oh, that's simple. <laughs> 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 um, first of all, we have the Israeli consulate in, in Los Angeles. You can call up the consulate. Secondly, I'll give you my email if you want. It's CG, which stands for Consul General. At LA, which stands for LA. <laughs> dot mfa dot gov dot ir mfa is the ministry of foreign affairs dot gov dot ir yes so i repeat cg at la dot mfa dot gov dot ir see thank you for addressing us today very much um part of my platform is combating bds UCLA and at West LA College. Uh, for those who don't know what BDS means, it means boycott the best and sanctity Israel. It's a very evil, evil program. Uh, does the consulate take an active interest in helping us combat them? Sure. We don't. Uh, we are active part of days on the ground. But we have a lot of friends, a lot of organizations that are uh, can't stand the BDS and BDS um, ideology, and they are the ones who fight it on the, on the ground. So uh, we can always connect you with those, we can always give information, background information, uh, we can also connect you with friends that could help on the ground. And you just tell us what the circumstances are, and we're always, always glad to receive information, and then we can uh, act with partners and friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you all success. Thank you. Thank you. We've been speaking about education, right? An educated business is a successful business. An educated person is a great person. So thank you again, Council General, for that enlightening information. I have to come again. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, the moment has come for you to shine. It's your time now. We're going to go around the room. We're going to start with this section. One by one, we're going to stand up. We're going to politely introduce ourselves. Tell us what you, know, what you do, what your business is. We are tied on time. Keep it short. To inspire you to keep it short. The longer it is, the less we remember. We're going to start with this section with Taylor. By the way, Taylor, uh, if anyone is interested in wonderful speech. She does have a signing sheet. Thank you. So I do a variety of different things. Like I said, I'm an award-winning published author and I write for several national um, magazines. I have my own business. I'm a local business owner of a rug cleaning and sales company for, specialized for um, virgin rugs. And um, I'm going to be attending law school next year. That's me. Yeah. Good morning, my name is Daniel Scott. I'm representing Pacific Exterminator, uh, the local pest control experts in Los Angeles and Ventura County. Uh, we specialize in termite and pest control. Uh, put shortly, uh, we protect people, property, and the food supply. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel Scott. I'm a Philip Gabriel. I own a store called Scrubs Unlimited, specializing in scrubs and lab coats. And our market right now is clinics and schools and, uh, and a large uh, organization. Hi, I'm Carolina Garcia with CXG Accounting. I specialize in 
specialize in clapping for keeping solutions. I love bookkeeping, so you don't have to. Hi, Ken. My name is Dr. Paul Super. I have two practices, one in Greenwood and one in Bel Air. Rabbi Newman was my rabbi growing up in South Africa. So that's what I'm My father. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, if you want to look good and see good, see me, Paul Super. Hi, I'm Frank Chavez, a commercial printer, uh, Miniman Press, and uh, my location is in Burbank. I do a lot of my business over the hill. We just don't print business cards, but we print anything that you can uh, fit, put a name or a logo onto. Thank you. Good morning. I have a chance to meet you all before. I'm Ted Green. I'm the president of Green Public Affairs and Campaigns. In addition to your chamber, I'm the uh, legislative consultant for five other chambers of commerce. And I work as a lobbyist and a grassroots organizer uh, for uh, companies, trade associations, <laughs> uh, my name is Bryce McKaysen. I have a small business consulting company called Library Business Coaching. We've we'll been about 75 businesses over the last year. <coughs> training and development seminars. Um, we've worked with about 1,000 people in that arena and uh, can do a lot of different kind of trainings for companies. A lot of different things. Glenn Ratcliffe, I own event staffing for company here in West LA. And I'm also, like I said, the uh, a candidate for assembly for this area, West LA, Westwood, and Culver City. Uh, if you have some time on the way out, I really appreciate your signature on my paperwork. I got turned into the registrar today by four. But I just joined the chamber last night because I made a commitment to stay in LA or I'll something with one of those families leaving. Thank you. I work at 
UCLA, but I'm also a distributor of breathing control kits, defibrillators, and trauma kits. And I will train your staff, your kids' school, your kids' teachers for free, with, um, even if they don't purchase kits. I think it's that important. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Faith Judy Wazanski. I grew up in Santa Monica. I live in Brentwood. I'm a real estate agent for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, and I like to work with buyers and sellers. It's a great time to buy. Interest rates are very, very low. Good time to sell. Prices are up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I am in a car rental business. We are headquartered in Los Angeles and uh, we have offices in uh, Las Vegas and San Francisco and I am also chairing the operations committee at the Chamber of Commerce and I am happy to say as of 11 days ago I am now the father to the baby girl. Yeah. Good morning everyone, Rusbe Farahanipur, I'm your local catering and restaurant in Westwood Boulevard. We are getting close to the holiday season. If you have any catering needs or holiday party, think of me. Elham Yagubian, Tower of Bubble Language Services. Uh, we provided tutoring in different languages as well as translations for uh, documents, medical issues. Uh, and if you want to translate your website, we, we can help you as well. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hands like tingling from all the clapping? You are you. It's your turn. Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, like always, I just want to remind you there's the art of business, there's the art of real estate. But where is the artist? My name is Daniel Rangel. I'm a real estate agent with Coldwell Banker doing residential and residential income properties, better known as the artist of real estate. You can find me at theartistofrealestate.com. You can email me at daniel at theartistofrealestate.com. You can find me on Facebook at theartistofrealestate.com. YouTube at theartistofrealestate.com. <laughs> My name is Farzo Drefahi. Uh, actually, I'm happy because I'm graduating in December. <laughs> and, <laughs> and actually, next week, uh, we will have shoot the epic music video and between Saturday to Tuesday, and I'm happy, so happy about this. Actually, I'm a filmmaker, videographer, cinematographer, and Congratulations. Council General, you're good. You want to introduce yourself? You don't know me by now. All right. Do we have any new members to the West Lake? Yes. Please come on stage. We would love to give you a warm welcome. If you don't mind, I'll speak here to my Walker. Are you the only one? I'm the only member. Okay. Can we get some class for these who are new members? What? Class? Like a little class? Oh. Just two? Am I missing anyone? And we usually give you another moment if you want to introduce yourself again, name, what you do. Uh, a little more thorough. Yeah. Um, my job at UCLA, I work in the kids' cancer clinic um, for the last 20 years. I'm the intervention specialist, cognitive uh, intervention, because of the late effects of cancer treatment and uh, radiation on the developing brain, especially in younger children. I started a charity about 10 years ago called Foundation Think Again, thinkagain.org, that pays for rehabilitation therapies for kids following cancer and brain tumors. And about three years ago, 
I um, got my EMS safety instructor certification so that I can train people how to stop bleeding, method bleeding, how to, how to um, use a defibrillator. I'm really into public access um, of, of people stepping in and saving lives, and all proceeds from those sales goes to the charity. Thank Beautiful. You. Thank you. Another moment of silence is reserved for a real quick one. Again, I need to shoot because we have to. I'm not going to call a stick now. Glenn Ratcliffe, lifelong resident of the area. Um, I own a company called Event Staffing Professionals. We provide security and crowd management for major events. Uh, I used to, it's funny that we're here. I used to be a bodyguard to Dr. Armin Hammer years ago. And uh, through him, I, I was also the bodyguard to the son of the Shah of Iran, Reza Pahlavi, uh, before they went back to Maryland. Uh, I, I'm always been proud to call myself the West Happiest place on earth, second only to...